Hello, my name is Thijs Monté. I'm a solution engineer at BMC. And today I will be discussing CI-CD integration using the automation API. And what we're aiming for is to uh, incorporate ContraM into our development environment where we can do local development with our EDA. We, can, we have a runtime environment to run our workloads against uh, and then commit our changes into a, a, a Git repository and from there uh, we travel along the CI-CD pipeline and eventually deploy uh, our, our changes in an automated way uh, onto st the staging environment and eventually on the production environment. Before I will jump into the demo, let me first explain what I'm going to show. So what we're seeing here is the upper half of, of this, this uh, slide. Uh, it's basically the development environment, the local development environment, uh, and the lower part is the CI-CD pipeline. Um, and as a developer, in this example, I'm using an EDA to develop my Java program, uh, and I'm building and running my Java program against my local SDK to do some basic smoke testing before I do a commit into the central source code repository. And from there we do the build, test and deploy automation uh, and eventually deploy our changes over the different environments we are using. Now with jobs as code, we can become part of this. So now we can also develop our, our workflows as code in JSON format. And basically we want to do the same stuff as, as we do for our Java program in this example. So here we're using uh, the automation API to integrate against the workbench. And the workbench is a, a black box ContraM environment, a, a virtual appliance, uh, which can be used as runtime environment. And I can either run it locally on my laptop uh, using Oracle VirtualBox, or we can uh, put it somewhere on a central location. Uh, in, my, in my example, I've, I've uploaded it to, uh, uh, to AWS, um, and I can share it with my fellow developers. And through the provisioning service, I can connect an agent uh, to the workbench to run those workloads and test those workloads on my development system. Now, once my changes are, uh, are done, I'm checking in my jobs as code, uh, my JSON file into the central code repo uh, source repository, just like uh, we do with our Java program in this example. And again, we travel along the pipeline. Uh, so here we can use the automation API to to do the build automation, the test automation, and eventually deploy the changes over the different environments. And for there, for the deployment, we will use a concept called Deploy Descriptor, so we can update our job definition to match our target environment. So we really have an immutable artifact here, and we don't touch the artifact anymore once we commit it into our central source code repository. So before I jump into the demo, let me explain you which services are involved uh, throughout the different stages of the CI-CD pipeline. So at first, on the developer station here on the left, uh, we start to develop our workflow uh, in JSON format, and we want to, from our EDA, we want to build and validate if the syntax is correct. For that, we're using the build service of the automation API. And once the build is successful, we can start doing our smoke test, and we can actually run and execute the workflow against our development environment. And for that, we're using the run service, and to set up our development environment, we can use the provision service to pro automatically provision an agent on our development environment and connect it to the workbench. Once we're happy with our result, we do a commit. Uh, so basically, we put the JSON file into our Git uh, repository. And then, uh, as part of the automated CI-CD pipeline, uh, we do the build automation. And uh, as first in the example, what we do is we add, we configure the environment using the automation API uh, config environment service. And once we have set up the environment, uh, we can build the syntax again on our target environment. So the difference here is that we uh, can use something like deploy descriptor. So the deploy descriptor will update uh, our JSON file to match the target environment. In the test, Phase, we can, first of all, I've included a job to print that actual transformation because if we want to debug our CI CD pipeline, we can see in, this, in our pipeline what the actual JSON file is, which we will be using uh, for the rest of the services. Um, and the run service, we will use that to execute the flow. And the run status can be used to fetch the output, um, to fetch the status with our additional services to fetch the output. So we can use the different run services uh, to include our job flow in the test automation. 
Now, the provisioning, we can use that if we have uh, immutable infrastructure as part of our CICD pipeline. And eventually, we will use the deploy service to deploy uh, <coughs> our changes onto the uh, target environment. We've covered all, all the different services we're using for our CICD integration. So now let's have a look at uh, the actual demo. So now I'm here behind my, behind my laptop. Let's say I'm a developer. I'm tasked to fix an issue in our application. Uh, there's, a, there's an issue we re uh, reported that the job is failing. Um, and just to explain briefly my setup, I have the, the workbench running here on my local machine. It can be part of my development stack or my development environment. Um, I will minimize it for now. We won't, we won't need it anymore. It's running here in Orto, or, Oracle Virtual Box. And I'm here behind Eclipse. Uh, I'm using Eclipse as my EDA. Uh, the great thing about the automation API, it's an open API, so I can use any EDA I want. Uh, in this case, uh, I, I'm used to, to using Eclipse, so I've chosen to, to use Eclipse. And I have all the features here, like I do have uh, for any other program language. Um, I have here my jobs as code. Uh, workflow definition. Uh, I have, have the outline of that, uh, that definition. Um, I have my Git integration, so here I see my Git repositories. It's already stored here on my Git repository. Uh, and my first step now is to try to reproduce the issue. So for that, I'm going to run uh, this workflow against the workbench. The beauty of this is that it will automatically open a graphical representation of my flow. It, you can configure if you want, you want to do so or not. Um, I've chosen to do so. And now the workbench is automatically opening. And I can see the flow represented in a graphical way. And here I can see, indeed, there's a job that has filled. So here I can do the basic operational commands, like I can hold a job, I can rerun a job, I can uh, basically debug what's going on. And here, for this job, I'm looking at the output to figure out what's wrong. What do I need to change in order to fix this item? So here, I'm seeing I'm trying to run a non-existing command. So obviously, that's not something that will work. So I will go back to my Eclipse. I will go back to the, to the job that I just uh, debugged in, in, the, in the workbench, in the graphical representation. And I'm going to change this for, in this case, I'll just put a sleep command. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to build this to validate if my job flow is correct. And as you can see in the console below, just like it would, have, would do in, uh, for my Java program or Python or whatever I'm, uh, I'm programming in, I get an error because, on purpose, um, I removed one of the semicolons to, to create this error. So I'm now I'm going to, to fix this issue, and I'm going to build it again. Again, below in the console, I can see the report. The build was successful. Uh, so let's rerun this flow to see if it's indeed if the job uh, is now running OK. So again, the workbench will automatically open my browser. And as we can now see, uh, the job is now running. It's not failing anymore. So if we wait, we will see this job will end OK. Uh, so I'm good to, to do a check-in of my source code uh, into the source code repository. So here on the, on the, on the right in my Eclipse, I'm going to, to commit this change. And I'm going to enter a commit message. Now, when I do the commit and push to the, to the source code repository, the pipeline will kick in to um, automatically build and test and, and deploy this on my staging environment. And for that, uh, before I mentioned the deploy descriptor, part of my project is a deploy descriptor file, which holds the specification of what I want to update for my target environment. And my setup, I have one for my staging environment and one for my production environment. And I'm now going to, to commit this change. And for my CI CD pipeline, I'm using uh, GitLab. Um, but again, it's an open API, so it will work with Jenkins. It will work with any, any other uh, tools that are out there. So let me go uh, to my uh, GitLab environment. Here, as you can see, I have two branches, the staging environment and the master environment. 
and I here see the commit message on my sample.json file that I've updated the job called this one will fill. Now let's have a look at the pipeline. I can here see the pipeline is running. And if I click on it, I see the flow I explained earlier with the sheet with all the different services. So the first step was to configure my environment. The second step was to automatically build. Uh, then we triggered the test automation. And to give you an example here, if we look at the uh, printout of the transformation, I see the job has updated. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, the run as user was updated. On my local system, the run as user was Workbench. Uh, on this environment, I'm using a different user and a different host. So this is the actual JSON file which we are using to test and deploy uh, this on this environment. Probably if I refresh, I expect it will be finished now. And indeed, I can now see that uh, the final stage, the deployment stage, has completed successful. So here in my log of my CI CD pipeline, uh, I see that the jobs are deployed on my staging environment. So from here, I can create a merge request to the master branch, which in my example will trigger the pipeline to deploy this change on my production environment. So I've created the merge request. I've, I've assigned it to myself. I will accept the merge request. And now my master branch will include the changes as well, as we can see here. And again, here we see the, the pipeline running, and now it's running for the production environment. And to show you the example, here we're using the CTM build for the file we've just committed, and we merge with the master branch. And here you can see I'm using the deploy descriptor file for the master branch. And we are aiming to do the build against the production environment. So to summarize, we've seen how I was using my Eclipse environment to edit my JSON file. We used the workbench to run uh, this, uh, this file against my development environment. With that, I was able to reproduce the issue. I was able to fix it and do a smoke test on my local environment. Then I did a commit to the staging environment, and with the pipeline, it was automatically deployed on that staging environment. Um, and after we got the approval, uh, we merged, did a merge request with the production environment, with the master branch, and we deployed the changes on the production environment. The example I used in this video is available on our jobsascode.io website. Together with the sheet I showed earlier on which services are used in the CI CD integration. And if you're interested to learn more, there are a bunch of other videos covering uh, several use cases we have with the Automation API.